about uh, one of your your former sides, or no, sorry, not your former sides, your boyhood club. You're an Everton fan, right? Yeah, I grew why, up an Everton fan. Why was that? Why did you choose the blue half? Nan and granddad were season ticket holders, and um, that side of the family was from Liverpool. My dad's side and my mum mum side was from Dublin. Um, my dad's family was staunch Evertonians. Um, season ticket holders, sixty, seventy years. Ashes on the pitch, the whole lot. Oh wow! Yeah, they still do that there at club. They do no, that. No, you weren't allowed to do that, but no, I'm sure. yeah, they were. Oh, they did it. Yeah, legally. We won't talk about it. Uh, a big game tonight against Crystal Palace in the FA Cup third round live on Talk Sport. What what have you made of everything at Goodison Park this season, especially with the points deduction? Um, I think it's been brilliant. Uh, I think he Sean Dice is exactly what Everton needed to pull the club together. And it's for the first time in a very long time, I've been going to matches when I can, and it has that feeling of a club together. Does it surprise you, you look at the last couple of seasons, Everton Football Club, like it's a huge football club, and it almost feels like it's, probably since Ancelotti left, like it's gone the wrong direction. Does that surprise you? Yeah, but they've, they've made some strange decisions with managers, and they've had some unbelievable managers in yeah. there. Look at Ancelotti, Benitez, who won a lot, I wouldn't say on the Everton side, but um, David Silva, uh, Roberto Martinez, uh, Mar- Marco Silva, sorry, Roberto Martinez at the time, and... Yeah, they made a lot of mistakes behind the scenes for the past few years, but now they've got Kevin Thelwell, who's sporting director. They've got people in doing things behind it. There's a lot of work going on, but they've made a lot of mistakes in the past few years with signings, and that's why they're in trouble now with the financial side of it. Yeah, and I think hopefully it'll just it'll be sorted soon enough, and it'll be a club hopefully back on the up. That's good. Sorry, because I was going to say, when, when, how long do you think expect it to be? Because I always remember when Ancelotti, I think, finished ninth. I remember coming in here and saying, "That's not good enough for Everton Football Club ninth. When are they going to get back to that level? Do you think?" I don't know. Um, they've got a good solid base in the team now. If you look what, what, what the manager's come in and done and Sean's come in and you've put like, like the James Tarkowski and you've got Dwight McNeil. You've still got Seamus involved in the club um, and you've got some you've got some good player like Jack Harrison. I think it'll be a bit of time because the fi- the finances are going to be dictated to by what they can spend in, in, in a financial fair play. The, the stadium's have moved back a year I think when they get into the stadium but then how's that going to change the atmosphere all things like that but Hopefully things just stabilise now and I think the manager there is perfect for it. He knows mm-hmm. how to get pull a team together and get that bond between the, the players and the fans and all the players as one. Um, and it can turn around quite quickly. You know, there's not you've got that top six, seven in the Premier League. You know, we were, it, it's sort of everyone else and everyone then goes, who are the three worst teams to come up? And hopefully you're better than the three worst. Mm-hmm. A lot of teams look at that and there's not then a lot of difference. Yeah. And then you go Brighton who have done really well, Newcastle who are really pushing and they want to be obviously a global brand now. And Villa, who have come out of nowhere, and your ex team are absolutely flying, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Weird, isn't it? He leaves and they do well. Um, <laughs> how, how do you see Everton as a club? And the reason I asked that, when I was growing up, we were talking about my love and Bentley's love of the FA Cup when we were kids and how things change now. And of course, if you're maybe 10 or 15 years old, you don't see Everton in the same light that I used to see them in. Everton were a club that won the old first division. They were competing with Liverpool for for titles they won in Europe of course you know they're they're an unbelievable team of Kevin Ratcliffe Sheedy Neville South or Peter Reid the list goes on of wonderful Andy Gray up top the list goes on and on how how do you see Liverpool, uh, Everton now is it a club that you're thinking before a ball is kicked at the start of a season I hope we don't go down are you thinking top 10 as Benny alluded to would be unbelievable can we nick a trophy what are Everton at the moment uh, it has been I hope we don't go down um, with the with the mistakes that's been made and the way the seasons have ended, but I think now if you get those points back or anything back, um, you've got to look at that and go, can we get in the top ten? That's an unbelievable, mm. especially mm. with especially with the the finances and he's not been able to spend a lot and things like that. So if you can get that and get the finances right and get maybe investors into the club or whatever and move to a new stadium, you're on a good footing. Then you're on a good footing with a. And Liverpool fans aren't going to like me, but it's 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 the, the people's club for me. It's it's a club for for Liverpool. I see Everton as a as a the, the one club for me in Liverpool. Mm. You, you, you would say that, that. I mean, you, you, you and they'll hate me for that as well. You understand that? I totally understand. You, you're a United yeah. fan that comes from Manchester. You understand that? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Benny's been a little bit facetious. <laughs> in fact, while he's been let me ask you, um, could you ever have played for Liverpool? Because Benny, of course, played for Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> I never got asked to, no, so no. Would you have? If they would, would have come calling, yeah. I would have went to Everton first. No, but if they did Everton, we don't want you. Come on, John, you know you would have. 
For Liverpool? Yeah, yeah, of course. I don't think you could ever turn down playing for a team, could you? Would you kiss the badge? Absolutely not. Bentley kisses the... What? Don't lie. Don't spread... <laughs> don't lie. <laughs> don't do that. But what, what, what badge did he kiss? What, exactly. None. <laughs> I want to say the word cockerel, but for comedic <laughs> value, I'm not allowed. Uh, what was it like? How many times did you play against Everton? I mean, what's that like playing against your boyhood club? That must have been uh, tough. Never scored against Everton. Did you not? No. I love playing against Everton. It's still got dogs abuse. Yeah. But, uh, but I loved it. Just playing... The stadium's going to go soon, but just playing at Goodison Park. It's an old stadium, one I grew up going to. When I could, when we could afford to go to, my brother had a season ticket, but I used to get tickets when there was a spare one. Go and stand in the Gladys Street, and uh, I loved it. Loved it when I could go, but uh, yeah, never scored against them. You know, you've been Not a, on purpose. You've been an Everton fan, though. It must have been really nice to score the hat trick against Liverpool. You get a trick against Liverpool? No, no. I've scored a lot against Liverpool, but no. Yeah, I knew you scored a trick. You got a couple when you. What was the score at, at Stoke Stadium? Six or something? Six one, yeah. Last game of the season. Oh, oh. Stephen Gerrard's last game, that. Oh, and you did that to him? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Just the one. <laughs> oh, I was that. Yeah, no, it was. Uh, that was some game. There was some team we had at Stoke, and that was some game. Just everything went in. It was the last game of the season. Um, And it was one of those we were. I think we scored five, five nil at half time. Yeah, I remember. Let, let me ask you about your time at Stoke. You're probably best known for your time at Stoke, right? Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. A, a, yeah. a great group of players. We alluded to a few of them earlier on. You had lots of mid-table finishes. You got to an FA Cup final as well. W- what was it like playing for Stoke um, at that time? Because a, a bit like when I said, what's Everton now and what are you hoping to get? What was what was the aspirations of a Stoke City side before a ball being kicked? Well, for me personally, I'd been in the Premier League when I was 18 at Bolton. And I had a little taste of it and, and went down the leagues and ended up at Hull, Wrexham, Chester, then back up Ipswich and Stoke. So it was my, in my head, it was my last chance at the Premier League. I was 26, 27, and that's why I wanted to go it's so not badly. Old though, is it? No, but once you get to 28, 29, a Premier League cup going to take you. Mm. That's what I thought. So it was, it was my last chance. And I thought, you know, well, not thought, I did. It was, it was give it everything. I was there's no one that worked harder than me, no one was more dedicated than me, full stop. And we had some team when a fair we had three different phrases, I think. The first went in was Booth, Shawcross, Ooh. Mark Wilson, Wilkinson, Thomas Sorensen, Asmir Begovic, Pennant, Kane, Whelan, Whitehead, Etherington, Crouch, me, Kenwin Jones, Ricardo Fuller. And it was and then under Tony Pulis, you'd bring in players. Then we had people like Michael Owen, John Carew, Ida Good Johnson, Tun Chai. And then Tony Pulis got sacked. Mark Hughes came in. And then it was a change in dynamic. And I think Mark Hughes came in and didn't realise how good the players were in the team. We always known for what we said then, lining up in the tunnel and being six foot five. Yeah. But we could play as well when we wanted to. Um, but when the players then came in, it was yeah, Ojan, Arnautovic, Shakiri, um, Hossel, who's now playing for Real Madrid, these type of players, and it was, uh, and we could mix it because we still had that old school mentality, but everyone just bought into it, and especially like the Spanish lads, Munez, Bojan, Hossel, real good group of lads, even people who probably get a bad rep, like Onaltovic, not a problem with them, one mm-hmm. bit. Um, everyone bought into what we were doing. We just had a really good dressing room all the way through. That first team you spoke about I mean that was so hard to play against because as you said they're hoof Shawcross two good goalkeepers what was it about that team would you say out of the three you said they're the three teams that was the best one that first crop of players just different just different everyone hated us didn't they everyone, yeah. everyone I hated going there absolutely hated playing against us we knew it as well but that's like so a backhand compliment it. right yeah I remember coming <laughs> I, don't know, you, I don't think you were Spurs at the time I remember coming off against Spurs at half time Oh, where your gaff? At our, yeah, at our place. And I remember Kyle Walker going off with Aaron Lennon, Aaron Lennon in front of us. And we were winning 2 0. And they were telling us that they were speaking to each other how bad we were, just hammering us. And I was walking and behind us just laughing. We were, I think we were 2 0 off, yeah. Just everyone hated it. So, But we had that, we just had that determination, that grit. Mm. So there was no messing around. You know, like Huth, people like Rob Huth type player, you just don't want to mess with whatsoever. You spoke about we just touching it briefly about the Liverpool game. Now there's quite a funny story about half time. Yeah. What happened at half time? Well, Ryan has said we come in, everyone just burst out laughing. Ryan said, didn't he? So it got brought up the other day to me. Actually, I did something with Ryan at Stoke. Um, 
I was just surreal, probably going into the dressing room. Mark Hughes probably didn't is have it, to say anything. So this is when you're five nil up, right? Yeah, yeah. Half time. yeah so um, I think Ryan has Ryan has said we've gone in and we all just started laughing, but probably so. Some players probably were, but thinking your head it's still Liverpool, isn't it? So I'm thinking, don't let them score a goal early on. Talk Sport Drive, super opinionated sporting debate, Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.